Hello and welcome back to At The Table. I'm Jake. And I'm Jason, father and son team here. Yep, and we are bringing you our weekly common call for the week. But um, before we get started, we'd like to say thanks for tuning in um, and taking the time to watch our video. Um, Give us some feedback and comment, subscribe, you know, all that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Your feedback means a lot. We appreciate it. So keep it coming. Yep. Um, so let's get started. Before we go over our haul, which is pretty light this week. It is lighter than last week for sure. Um, we are going to talk about our favorite pick from last week. All right. Why don't you start off? I bet I have an idea of it. Um, this is probably going to be shocker for you all because I probably have already chosen this once. It's going to be Silk again. Um, I, I, it's a really neat book. I've really enjoyed it. The story is great, uh, just in general, the action-packed, um, and the arc and the storyline has all been really good. It's my first time, uh, with this character, and I really like it, um... And that's saying a lot, because we had Spider's Shadow last week, and we had some others that were really great books right up your alley, so that's oh, high yeah. praise for Silk. So, I would say Silk was definitely up there on my list, um, but I'm gonna go with something a little bit different for my favorite pick. Um, just because it surprised me with how much I enjoyed it, and that's uh, Time Before Time, uh, the image book that came out last week, a number one about some time travelers that are going back and smuggling people back into a year where there, it's a better life. There was a, a hook near the last, I don't know, third of the book or so with what happens with one of the two characters that we're following that I didn't really see coming that surprised me. I think this one's got a lot of promise. I look forward to it. Okay, so that was our favorite uh, reads for last week, but let's get into the variants for this week, which was actually really, really light. Yeah, no incentives, but we did pick up yeah. some variants. Why don't you start us off with the first one? So I think this is our first Peach with Mocha Stormbreaker we got. I really like this one, and you know what? kind of reminds me of an a audiobook we've been listening to a lot, but uh, it's really cool. Um, I really like the cover. Um, I like all the colors, and I think the skull is really too. cool. I do, too. We're really hit or miss, and we passed yeah. on one of the other Peach uh, Stormbreaker covers back when they were, I think that was back when they were still one per store, or, mm-hmm. or they were harder to get back yeah, then. Yeah, they were one per store. And we just, they just didn't love that particular cover. Yeah. Um, but this one we like a good bit. So some of the stuff she's done recently, uh, I think there was a maybe... Carnage. There was a An alien. Carnage. And, yeah. So we're, we're definitely finding some things to like, so... Yep. What else have we got there, bud? Um, so next up, there is Radiant Black, issue number three, second printing. Um, I don't know much about this book. It's really one of your books. So. Yeah, it's one of my books, and we'll talk more about it uh, when we come up. But I, this one just caught my eye. It looks like there were a couple of other issues reprinted, and they were on the shelf. But I just really like this cover. It jumped out at me, so we grabbed that. So, next up, this is one of those Hero Reborn books, uh, Captain America 29. Um, this is a Red Skull and Venom um, mix, and I really like the cover. I, you picked it out. I didn't even know this I was I bought out. it purely for the cover because, honestly, I haven't liked the Heroes Reborn. Um, it's just not my thing, not mm-hmm. for me, but that cover, when I saw what it was and, and how much you love mm-hmm. Venom covers, it was one that I bought purely for the cover just because it was really cool. Yeah. So this is enough that the cover makes you want to read it. And I think you should read it and and pick for yourself whether you like the Heroes Reborn. You may have a completely different take on it than I did. Okay, so for our next variant of the week, it is Batman Zero Point. I believe this is a C cover. I may be wrong. It's either B or C. Yeah, it's one of the two. But, um, again, really like the cover. Snake Eye. Um, He's been in the game for quite a little while. Yep, and we'll talk about that. Um, I think I have a feeling that's going to be one of your favorites, but we've been grabbing all the Fortnite covers. We did the same with the Marvel event. Jake really likes Fortnite. I play it with him from time to time, so it's been fun to collect. And we have the other. I actually think this one might be my favorite. Yeah, it's a really good cover. Of the Fortnite covers. So that, that pretty much wraps up our variants for this week. Okay. Let's, get, let's kick off our top three. We'll Here, go ahead and we'll cover... I'll give you the honor to go first. The three books that you're looking forward to the most, the three books that I'm looking forward to the most, and then we'll, we'll jump in and cover the rest of the stuff we picked up and why. Um, I'm going to go... I'm going to lead out with Radiant Black, number four. Now, I'll admit, I read issue one of this, and it didn't... I liked it, but I didn't love it. But I'm glad I stuck with it, because after reading two and three, it really picked up for me, and I'm really... This has become one I don't, definitely near the top of my list for the, a monthly read. It's just been kind of it's just been fun, and it's been action packed ever since you know from episode issue two on. It picked up the action. I like the art, and I, and I like the direction that this is going. So I'm really looking forward to reading that this week. What 
have you got for... Okay, so this is probably going to be a shocker, too, because I totally haven't talked about this book at all. It is Batman Fortnite Zero Point Number 3. So in this book, it is the the code is for a... Um, it is a Catwoman... Grappling pickaxe? Yeah, it's a pickaxe, grappling but it's a grappling pickaxe. hook, but... It looks pretty cool. Yeah, it does look really cool. Um, I, I've really enjoyed the series. Um, the art style, again, is a ton like Fortnite. And just in general... But it has, still has a Batman still has, feel to yeah, it, right? Yeah, it does. And it has... It's just... It's a really good story. I would recommend picking it up, even if you don't like Fortnite, just to give it a try. And if you happen to be thing. a parent who has kids that love Fortnite, and maybe you want to get them reading or get them to check out comic books with you, this is a, ga- a great gateway. Yeah. It continues to be fun. And even I, as someone who's even just lukewarm on Fortnite, this honestly, the story is way better than I would have expected out of this type of promotional crossover. Mm-hmm. I've actually enjoyed it. It's been interesting to see... Basically, Batman being Batman stuck inside of Fortnite. You want to go All right, I'm going to pick um, for my second pick. I'm going to go with a number one, Rangers of the Divide. And I, this week, looking through, it was kind of a tougher week for books that I could get excited about you and I both reading, especially for anything new. And this one caught my eye. There's just, among all the other stuff, there's a lot of darker independent stuff out, but not a lot of stuff that I think you and I should read together. But this one caught my eye. It takes place in kind of a... A future fantasy sort of sci-fi world. Um, we've got a story where the peacekeepers of this world have apparently disappeared, and then a, a former commander happens on a group of these cadets who are eager to kind of make a difference and eager for some tutelage or some leadership. And this one has dragons and has technology, so it's kind of a can't really put it just in the fantasy bucket or the sci-fi. It sounds like it's going to be an interesting, interesting mix of both. I did find some preview pages online, and I really like what I can see of the art on the interior, so I'm really hopeful that this turns into another favorite uh, for you and I. Um. So, next up, Black Knight, Curse of the Ebony Blade, and this one, Emma Bloodstone, I believe, makes an appearance. Uh, it is uh, Black Knight versus Thor in this one. Um, it's really, it's a Black Knight title story. I got into it from King of Black. Um, it's been really good. I really enjoy it. Uh, good action packed, but still has this right amount of like knowing the character, getting to know the character, and character growth. Um, and I really enjoy it. Yeah, I'm a little behind in this one, but you keep putting it on your favorites list, so yeah. I've got to make a make it a point of catching up. And we're only three issues in. I did read the King and Black stuff that he appeared in, but I have I'm behind in this the rest of this. So for my file, anyone who has seen any of these videos before. And if you happen to know this is out, this shouldn't be a surprise. I am picking Stray Dogs number four. It is my absolute must-read. Can't wait. I'll probably read it right after this video, as a matter of fact. Issues one through three have just blown me away. I will admit that three was a little rough. That's um, Something happens at the end of that book, and it, it definitely was sad. It's uh, Mickey and I both talked about it. That one, that one almost made us teary-eyed at the end of it. It was just kind of rough. Something happens with one of the dogs. But the dogs are getting closer to figuring out what's going on and more on board as they deal with the fact that their their owner is essentially a serial killer who has been a, basically killing their masters and then adopting them. And it goes into it and the dogs are figuring all this out. Awesome, awesome story. My only complaint, and I think this is only five issues, which makes me pretty sad. I can't wait to read this. Okay, so for my last book, it is going to be uh, probably not a shocker. I probably have chosen this before, talked very highly of this book, or at least the writer of this. It is Daredevil number 30, written by Chip Zdarsky. Uh, Love his work, first off. Up there on my creator list. Um, Yeah, this is how we found Chip Zdarsky. uh, Yeah, and it was really, it was, this was the, I feel like when we picked out our books, right as we got into comics, this was on the list. Yeah, we this like was one of the very first uh, yeah. like, titles we that we put on the full list. This, I'm like, I'm really, really happy with this book. It's been such a good book. Yep. Um, yeah, it's been an interesting it. turn. Um, preview for, I think the solicit for this one goes something along the lines of Electra is kind of getting settled in the Hell's Kitchen, coming to terms with her role as Daredevil, and Matt is still obviously in prison dealing with that, and it, the mm-hmm. solicit mentions that he finds an unlikely ally. In there, so this is a great title. Every time it's out, well, definitely that'll be top of the list. And that's our uh, yeah. That's our top three, and we've also got over on the brainstorm website. We will drop a link 
um, for our uh, father son picks for our father our father son picks which we kind of combine this video gives us a chance to do individuals but we kind of combine and just focus on what we think are going to be great joint reads so you might want to check that out if you haven't already Okay, you want to get started with our uh, just our normal haul now? Yeah, jump in. What have you got there? I got Flash number 770. I'm going to admit I'm behind on this. Uh, I kind of jumped off on Future State. Um, I'm going to go back and read it eventually. Uh, I've read maybe the I've, first one post Future State, but I do yeah. know what's going on. Uh, this continues. Wally's kind of travels through time. Um, and just, I, I think this is, he's back during one of the World Wars, if I remember correctly here, so... While he's having a tough time of it as he quantum, quantum leaps through history. So I'm looking forward to catching up with that one. Okay, so next up is The Mighty Valkyries. You take this away. Well, this is a book that I think you've been reading, haven't you? Or are you behind in it too? Wink, wink, yes, yes. Well, we, we really dug The Valkyries from The King in Black. Yeah, we read that whole series. I really liked it. I'm behind on this. So it's the, hard enough keeping up with my favorite reads, okay? Yeah, well, maybe this one will make the list at some point. We both need to catch up, but we this do. is the spinoff title coming out of all the stuff that happened with the Valkyries and King of Black. So it's been on our pool list, and I really enjoyed the King of Black stuff, so we've kept it on. Way of X number two. This is, I admit, this is the only X title on my list on our pool list right now. I don't know that you've read any just because I've struggled to keep up with what's going on, but I really like Nightcrawler. Um, did not read the first issue of this. I will try to read one and two, and I'm really hoping that I can get enough of what's going on uh, to just enjoy an X title. So next up there is Champions number seven, I will admit. Um, I'm waiting until the series ends with the Champions before I read. But um, I know what's happening in this book. Basically, there is this... There are these group of people that own a business, I think, that are like really, really pro... Um, They're pro the... the anti uh teen superhero law so yeah so they created an app. this app that uh it's like i forget i think it's like warning um yeah i think it's a way to police them and and report yeah. them so this is the second part of that story and i think they're they're kind of going yep. in to fight the corporation yep so we really enjoyed the early issues of champions mm -hmm. and some of the stuff that ran I up love to the it team. um and it's just yeah. a matter of we need to catch up yeah you like that one i think yeah, I'm actually current with this one. I Walk With Monsters number six. I think this is probably the start of a, a new arc. Things did not quite go as expected, I think, when the, our hero tried to get her revenge on the guy that she's been chasing for a while. But I really like the dynamic between her and the guy that she's traveling with. Um, it really is just what it said. Her partner can literally transform into a monster, and they go hunting bad people. And a lot of the early issues were her going after someone that wronged her in her childhood. Good art, um, really solid art, interesting story. Um, it's one of the ones that I stay colonel, and that should tell you enough right there. So I'm caught up with this. It is Amazing Spider-Man number 66. Um, so this issue, it's kind of like getting into this new arc. I don't think it's quite in the new arc yet. I think there's a few filler books in between and then it's going to start this new arc um but in general the issues have been really good really action-packed uh really funny uh i really like them yeah i may use this yeah. as a jumping on point i keep joking about having declared spider-man bankruptcy because i fell so behind so far behind on like the king's ransom stuff and the yeah. whole arc but we've got them all and i, I definitely will just kind of probably have a spider-man weekend sometime soon and catch up i see a book i'm really excited about let me go. pull this out and this is another Chip Zdarsky book, and it's Stillwater. This one has been, I think it was paused for a little bit. I don't think we, I think this is the first time in a month or two that we've gotten issues. And, yep, number seven. We kind of, when this, we left off with this one, kind of a cliffhanger. Um, our main character had kind of gone through a lot. There was, uh, all heck had kind of broken loose in the town. And then on the outskirts, we had this militia that was going to kind of come in, and it looked like they were setting up to take over. And I think this is getting right into it. Great book, a little too violent and dark for Jake. Um, so maybe in a few years he'll catch up on this, but can't get enough of Chips at RC these days. And Stillwater, great title. Totally worth picking up the trade and catching up on. We only Another book that's back, uh, we only find them when they're dead. Number six, and I'll admit this book was tough to follow, one through five, but I enjoyed it. The art was kind of trippy, definitely pretty. Um, the story was just wild. It's just these space gods, giant space gods being harvested for 
basically is is almost like a precious metals type of thing. They're harvesting their organs for different uses. Um, and this crew becomes obsessed with them and basically jumps out and, and is trying to find them. Um, and they did find one near the end of the last book, and it was kind of a big cliffhanger. And what I'm reading on this one, we're getting a, chime, a time jump, and we kind of follow the crew and see how the universe has changed since that last book. This is, if nothing else, it's going to be interesting. I, I'm, I'm interested to see what Al Ewing brings next with this title. So next up, Redemption, issue four out of five. Yep, this is one that I am honestly waiting. I'm stockpiling. Uh, I love westerns. This one made me think Unforgiven when I saw and read uh, the the solicit for the f- first one. So I'm going to just wait for number five and read them all. The Walking Dead, number 15. Yep, and this is the, the deluxe issues. I'm still a few issues behind, but this has been my way of catching up. I never read The Walking Dead when I wasn't collecting or reading at the time this originally came out. So I'm using it as an excuse to go back, kind of read the cool extra notes, enjoy it in color. Not that I dislike black and white books, but this was a good chance to read it issue by issue, kind of in the same experience as if I had when it came out. The Bequest, this is another one that I'm behind on, but it is a fantasy title, so I'm excited about that. Rare artifacts crossed over into our world. Some folks come over and are hunting it and trying to take it back. Don't know much about this particular issue, but I'm hoping to catch up on it soon. Phantom on the scan. Yep. This is, uh, I believe I originally bought this because everyone at the shop are huge Colin Bunn fans. Uh, They tell me everything is great. The first issue I have, I have it. It's still in the to-read pile. But basically a bunch of psychics, every time they use their abilities, it's kind of slowly killing them. So a bunch of them have banded together to try to figure out what's going on, how they got their powers, why it's hurting them. They're also being hunted. So a lot of, it's an interesting concept. I'm, I think it's going to be a great read. Everyone tells me Colin Bunn's stuff is amazing. I need to read it and check it out. For our last book of the night, it is Nottingham number three. Yep, this is another one I need to catch up on, but I really like the idea that we're telling the Robin Hood story and the myth from a different side of things. They're kind of treating it as if the sheriff is the good guy and that Robin Hood and the men are basically terrorists, and we're getting more more of the same in three. I think now that I have the first three, I'll go ahead and read it. It's just been, you know, we've been crazy busy, so we're falling behind and only keeping up on our favorites. Yep, uh, so that was our weekly haul for the week. That's what we're excited about um, and just some of the stories in general and what we picked up. Um, we want to thank you all for tuning in, for uh, taking the time to watch our video. Yeah, and if you think we've missed the title or that there's something, we are always looking for recommendations, especially if we're yeah. missing something that would be a great father-son read. Mm-hmm. Please take a minute, drop a comment, let us know what we're missing, and we'll add it to the pool list. Yep, and um, like and subscribe if you've been enjoying the videos and enjoying the content. Yep, and we have some other content. We've been shooting and editing. We're catching up. We're hoping yep. to drop a couple more videos this week. We've got some D&D content coming and some other things that we think you'll like. So hit the like and subscribe, and we'll, we'll be back soon. Yep, bye.